to the AfterBuzz TV Network, now the largest new media platform on the web, and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Are you The After Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is After Buzz TV's Revenge After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. Two five six seventeen twenty nine, and now another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Revenge After Show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Bing is for doing. We're here doing season two, episode fifteen, Retribution. We're I'm back. joined. Yes, we're back. It's <laughs> been three weeks. That's why all this yes. <laughs> funneled excitement is just bursting out. I'm your host, Phil Svitek, joined alongside Catherine Tulich. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Missing this week, still in hibernation, ah. Anna Koppel, but joining the panel today, Roxy Stryer. After oh. Buzz TV celebrity guest. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, check her out on Californication later tonight, but. Enough of that. Uh, first off, we must say, Helen Hunt directed this episode. And directed an episode of Californication. There's the link. There Woo! you go. Who knew she was so talented? Yeah, she's been moving into directing for a while, though, which I didn't realize, because she actually directed way back with Mad About You when she was on that show. Right, in 1998 was yeah. the first TV show she directed. Yeah. It's a long time coming. And then she did a movie in 2007 with Colin Firth and Bette Midler. Mm -hmm. Then she found me, and now Revenge. Wow. <laughs> I thought good episode, too. I thought it was really good, really well done. Yeah. Well, they needed to make a real change now, didn't they? Well, the, the, uh, the first kind of change I saw, the opening scene, you know, again, it's, it's been however many weeks, and we get into this, and the, if you noticed, it was a little bit choppy, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that was done deliberately, and, and I like that. Right. I like that it wasn't so predictable. Like, we were talking throughout the episode about what we thought was going to happen next, and nobody quite knew where it was going, which sometimes I feel like this show can be predictable, and you know exactly where you're going to end up at the end of the episode. In fact, they usually start episodes with the end of the episode, but tonight we really didn't know. We did not. It was a perfect symmetry, as, as uh, Emily says. Uh, retribution equals symmetry. Um, and then I didn't get the rest of it, but something I'll, about retaliation. It basically, <laughs> yeah, you know, the the risk must be met and the guilty must be punished is That's essentially right. what what we come to. Um, but before we we kind of get into the to the thick of it, let's talk about Padma um, and Nolan. And I, I thought I thought I, I wasn't expecting the storyline to kind of not not that it ended, but to to come to a head in this way, you know. And do we still? I'm still not sure of Padma's allegiance here. Are you? Are you more confident or less confident of where where she's? Here's here's. I'm I'm confident in the sense of this. And when, when Nolan hands her carrion, mm. he leaves it in her hands. And it's so. What I like is that it's not Nolan being forced to do this. I mean, I guess yes, maybe because he said he's life's pawn, which I thought was a nice a nice term. But yeah. but I think. In the end, you know, it's nice that he hands it over to her and he says, you know, the choice is yours. Could there be some sort of twist here where the, the version of Carrie is still not finished or he's testing her, trying to see what yeah. she'll actually do? I mean, I'm not 100% convinced that he would be so willing just to give it away and put well, faith in her hand. Right? Exactly. Let's hope he's not that naive. Right. Cause... I'm hoping. Because when it comes to your family, you kind of do anything you can to make everybody survive. And so if I were her, I would... I think take the program to the initiative. So, uh, so let's say he del del deliberately gave her an incomplete right. program. Mm -hmm. Then what happens in the grand scheme of things? When she, I, well, she either a decides she can't give it to the initiative, and she comes back to him and says, "Listen, thank you for this. I couldn't do it." And then he can trust her, and he knows that sh he can let her into the inner circle. Or she brings it to the initiative, and he realizes that she made the wrong decision, and it's no love lost between the two of them, and both she and her father are killed. 
Now, what, what was your guys' take on Daniel as, as being part of the storyline? Because he wants to delete him? Yeah, I love how he, uh, Nolan says, you know, he's whatever call he, it. He, just... he's, he's basically thinks he might have a conscience now. I think he said that he, yeah. he might have discovered that he has a conscience now. Control, alt, delete. delete. Yes. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, I, I have not gotten your guys' full opinions on the show, which is why I'm so excited to be here tonight, because <laughs> I sit in my room, I watch the show, and I'm, like, talking to myself, so I'm really happy to be here. But in terms of Daniel, somebody else that I don't know which side he's on, I mean... Can you classify him as good guy or bad guy? Not really. So when he has this whole tough guy act and he goes to Nolan and he's like, listen, I'll take you down if you're messing with me. I don't know if I believe him. I don't know where his loyalties lie. It's kind of confusing to me. I don't think he's a bad guy. I just think he hasn't quite found his direction yet. He doesn't know when he does go bad. I think, you know, when he starts going down the Grayson a track, he realizes that maybe he is going too far. So, so that, wasn't guy? that about tonight? Sort of, he said to his parents, you know, I, you know, I, I've had enough. You know, how much more blood can you have on your hands? I've kind of had enough. So I think he's willing to go so so far. But in the end, I think he's kind of a good guy. You know, I think he's been playing bad guy. He's trying to be. He's trying to be the strong. So what's, what would be his angle if, if this thing gets deleted? Obviously, they don't have access to that, but they're still very powerful. Is he? Is he accepting maybe a fate of being a sacrificial lamb? Like what? what so he's what? trying to sort of cut off the initiative now by telling him to d delete Carrion, right? That's yes. what he's trying to do. So is he trying to sort of outmaneuver the initiative in some ways? Is that what his intention is? He thinks that this might. Well, the problem is, while he's trying to outmaneuver the initiative, he's also trying to outmaneuver his parents. And it's like, you mm. never know whether the initiative and the parents are aligned or whether they're completely separate. I mean, most of the time they seem to not get along and disagree. But Daniel kind of falls back and forth, and I'm not sure whether who he's trying to deceive more and who it's more important for him to overcome and, and do better than. So, it, it's, yes. again, you don't know, good guy doing bad things, bad guy doing good things. And like you're saying tonight, you said, how much blood are you too comfortable with because I just hit my limit? Yes. I mean, most people don't have a limit of how much blood they're the, comfortable the, with. The, the, limit is, the limit is none. So you know that he's not 100% a good guy because when blood starts to pour, that would be your limit. But he's let it, let it escalate, and now, I don't know, he's saying enough is enough. But is it, you know, what's one more death? What's one more drop of blood? I don't know if you can make a cutoff point after you let it go that far. I mean, I'm very confused in Daniel because I don't understand his plan. And, and you know, I'd like to think that he has a good plan, but his plans have never really been that good. <laughs> no, Him getting rid of the clock. Plans keep changing. That's the problem. <laughs> they do. And, and yeah. I don't think, you know, whereas everyone's thinking 10 moves ahead, he's mm. thinking maybe Five moves back. Yes, exactly. Except it really surprised me when he knew. Remember we saw, I, I actually think it was the last episode we saw, that he knew what Emily was up to in terms of getting him back and how she had aligned with his mother. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know that he knew that. And that proved to me that he's smarter than we give him credit for. And he does think more in the future. And he does see the bigger picture. So it's really difficult with him. You can never be sure how far he's seeing. And the thing with the clock tonight... Well, let me ask this. With the, with the clock... Okay, so, I mean, it's a clever move, but what's to stop the initiative from putting another bug in there? Exactly. And, then, and, and granted, what does that gain you? So, I mean, you're really not, I don't think in terms of the initiative, you're, you're not really fooling anyone by taking that out. They'll be like, dude, you know, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> we know we, you've been bugged. Why are you just, Let I don't know, I think it's too easy. One in, yeah. I, I want to counter that with, do you think that was sort of him sending a message to the initiative being like, I know you're here? And I'm not going to stand for it. I mean, it seemed like he didn't want the initiative why, to know why? because he went through all those steps. But I kind of think he's smarter than that. And maybe that was him saying, listen, I, I can handle business. Yeah, but there, there's a more clever way of doing that. I mean, in, in these sort of situations, you you have to you have to figure out a way to one up someone. Yeah. And, and whatever that may be, let's say... Um, let's say it's a betting scheme, right? And mm -hmm. in the end, you win whatever right that that's the way to show it not by showing them i know where you've bugged me yeah he's kind of impulsive in the, in his reaction he kind of reacts i think without thinking too much that's what i right yeah i think that's with him he's not the thinker the planner that he's that his mother is and that his father is well, and his, that emily is he kind of just 
I don't like this, I'm going to react, you know, or, you know. I well, don't, good idea, because, a yeah. uh, uh, good point, rather, yeah. because, you know, he called his mom, Victoria, mm -hmm. and she kind of gave him the Aiden test. Yes. You know, so she implanted that, so it's not re even really his plan, it's his mom's plan executed by Daniel. Right, yeah. and I'm not saying that I think that the plan that he's created, if he has, is the best plan. I'm not saying it was the most well thought out plan. All I'm saying is maybe he has a plan that we're not aware of because even if it's not right or the best, he seems to be thinking further than I gave him credit for originally. By asking his mom? <laughs> No, by the clock thing, by the Emily thing, and, and connecting the dots, and yes, asking his mother, who he knows knows the initiative better, and has dealt with them previously. I don't think that, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I just... that he can be knocked because he asked his mother for help. But he's trying to get away yeah. from the notion of the Graysons. I don't know. I just I just think Daniel is is sorely confused. Yes, I agree. Absolutely. I'm, I'm agreeing with that for yeah. certain. I'm just saying, I'm not saying he's doing the smartest thing, but I do think he's doing something. I think he's always playing out of his depth. He really tries, right. but he's always out of his depth, inevitably. Well, Absolutely. That, that's what I always feel like with Daniel. I mean, here, here's the fun part is that Daniel's the middle person, and therefore he's going to foil everyone's plans. The Initiatives, the Graysons, and Emily's. Yeah. He's all at so once. serious all of the time. Don't you just want to say to him, smile or be fun for a second. He used to be not a lot of things to be smiling no. about in this. <laughs> no, but season one, season one he was this little puppy dog and he but was his innocence has been shattered. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I just want to be like, you know what? I wish you weren't an alcoholic so I could say, go take a load off and knock a drink back and go to the bar and enjoy he's yourself. He's taking drinks. <laughs> he's saying. depressed. He's, he's yeah. in his little office. He's drinking. He's broken hearted. I mean, all the women he's been with have just, you know, nothing's working out. The poor guy. Come on. The poor guy. You know, he's with Is Ashley. I mean, seriously. I mean, oh. that, was that a wrong move? <laughs> well, let, let's let's uh, let's zone in on the Aiden plan. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so ba so the trades by Trask get um, get to Daniel. He's supposed to do them, and he passes it off to Aiden. Um, you know, if Aiden does this, we can trust him. But can somebody explain that to me further? So if Aiden does this, we can trust him because if he was working for Helen, he wouldn't do it because what? It would it would actually kind of be the path or whatever you call it, the imprint would go back to him. So he's risking sort of, I think, guilt in these trades. I think that's was the test, right? Yeah, be, yeah. because yeah. someone at the end of the, all this, mm. right, David Clark took the blame for, for the flight. Someone, yeah. ha someone is going to take the fall for this. Yes. We don't, you know, and it's kind of been pointing at if Daniel does everything correctly, then the notion is that Daniel's going to get off scot free. But why but did they have any sort of assumption that that Aiden was part of the initiative? I mean, that seemed to creep upon us this episode. All of a sudden, because how like, many options do you initiative. have? You're either with the in their minds, you're either with the initiative mm -hmm. or you're not. Or also because Daniel made that point that two he had two encounters, which Victoria expected was Trask, and then she said, "And who's the other one?" And he kind of said, well, Aiden kind of came to me. So she was sort of thinking, well, it must be, there must be a reason they both came Especially, together. Especially, yeah, because yeah. it, was, it was the prosser, yeah. um, the, the stone, deal. Yeah, that's right. The stuff. problem is yeah. Victoria always sets up these traps. And even when people manage to maneuver their way through them, she still doesn't trust them. So you know that this isn't going to hold, you know. Maybe she doesn't believe Aiden's initiative, but there's going to be another test along the line. She's still not going to have faith in him, and there's going to be issues between Daniel and Aiden, absolutely. Well, I think Aiden's predicting all this anyway. He must have known that that was the test and that it was... I mean, I'm assuming he knew all that. Right. And that it was the initiative. And he's just trying to get closer to Daniel because Emily's kind of lost the romantic connection at the moment. So there's no other way to get close to Daniel now. I, that's what I felt that ploy was oh, all about. Oh, you think so? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, the goal is by yeah. getting closer to Daniel and get closer, closer to, to the, the initiative. Yeah. yeah. So... And, and Emily's kind of lost that contact now. I mean, you can even see tonight she, her and Daniel were very sort of just kind of ships in the night passing. They didn't really have a lot to do with each other. So she's lost that contact for now, might be renewed. But so I think it's like Aiden is the only one that can yeah, and, make and, that link. And here's the thing you, with, yeah. um, you know, by being able to see these trades, he can report back to Emily, yeah. you know, on those specifically of what companies are kind of involved. And uh, I mean, ultimately you have, you have 
Nolan who can hack these records and change the fa I mean, you know what I mean speaking there's, of Nolan and in, in his words so just to recap <laughs> I, love they, that. I love that the script writer going let's just remind everyone <laughs> I know absolutely because <laughs> it has been three weeks off <laughs> Emily and Aiden still are sticking with this initiative thing both now for retribution like we were talking about tonight's episode because we know Aiden's sister is dead and we know that Emily's father is dead so now they're both on the same page looking for revenge, which is why they're trying to get to Daniel, so they can eventually get to Conrad, so that they can eventually get to the initiative? Nope, it's much no, more simpler than that now. it's more now. simple than that. I think that, no, I think they're basically uh, back to the Graysons. Back going, to the Graysons. Back to the Graysons, yeah. yeah. So why do they even care about the initiative? Because the Graysons were originally part of the initiative? Because to destroy the Graysons is to is to have the initiative. I mean, you know, the Graysons are the initiative in many ways. But the initiative seems to want to take the Graysons out just as badly as Aiden and Emily. No, they, they no, want to they're use using them. them. They're using them. Yeah, there's yeah. a difference. Not when they yeah. find out what they did to Helen. <laughs> well, I should write this show. <laughs> well, I mean, you're right in one sense, but I think they wouldn't just kill them. That, that doesn't benefit no. them. They're all about the benefit. Right. Yeah. So it, it'd have to be much smarter than that. Um, speaking of smart, you guys are all smart on, on listener land, as I like to call you every now and then. Yeah, most of you. Calling us what? Listener? Listener land. A listener land. Oh. No, we're, we're the hosts, but the, the people, the, you guys at home right now. I'm on you, listener land. Listener Sniff land. Sniff love it. <laughs> um, you guys in listener land, what we love is when you guys go to iTunes and YouTube and rate and comment and let us know what you guys think. You guys have really, really good opinions. Um, over there in listener land that we as hosts like to read. And so please, please continue to do that. Um, again, you guys have such different perspectives that I don't even think of. I pretend I'm smart, but I'm not that smart. You're pretty smart. I'm not that smart. I want to be on Nolan's level. So the point of that was rate, comment. Rate and comment on iTunes. On iTunes and YouTube. Because you have a duty as a smart person to, to do what's listen necessary. Land. Yes. <laughs> To your country, you owe it <laughs> to go to our iTunes page. Exactly, yes. and we want to hear from other countries too. That's right, we have like tons Australia. Of them. I know you love revenge. Come on. <laughs> um, all right. Speaking of uh, the the Graysons, let's talk about Conrad. Um, by the way, real fast. Uh, well, poor. Uh, well, poor is, an, poor is the wrong word, but Ashley. Mm. What? Well, there was an interesting scene where she's trying to get out of this. Like, are you handing over your resignation? And then she, you know, she's caught in this crossfire. She can't get out of it because she's the architect behind it. Yeah. I mean, what? What is her angle ultimately? What? I don't know what's going on with Ashley at the moment. She's losing screen time. I don't think they know what's going on with Ashley either. To be honest. Yeah. She. I, I don't know. I didn't see the. Yeah, she's still involved, but in what way? What? How? She. She is the blackmail, and somehow pictures could come out, and she wants to make it to the top, so she's using them. And Conrad likes her because Victoria doesn't, and they kind of pin her up against each other. I get the purpose that she serves in this show. It just seems like they wrote her character for the first couple seasons, and they were like. This is why she's here. Now she's a uh, season. Now she's grandfathered into the show, and they don't know what to do with her. So she's there, and they're just keeping her around because they might eventually need her. It's that, and they also, uh, to her credit, I think they really like her. Yeah. I think she's a good actress, and they're like, well, we want to use her. And yeah. you get caught. You got. You get caught in those situations a lot. That's yeah. why they keep her somewhat neutral, even though she's not neutral because she's enemies. Her enemies kind of stay her frenemies. So even somebody like Amanda tonight, she was like, I never hated Amanda. She still has that bond with Emily, sort of. You know, now she is kind of with Conrad, but Victoria could always pull her. She's not on the worst terms with Daniel, that as not as bad as she could be. Well, that could be reignited if I can <laughs> tell you in some news and gossip. About right. That. So <laughs> yeah. I think that she is kind of she tries to keep a fair playing field all right and well, i thought even her look tonight was quite different too the hair was back it was much more she's severe and, and serious oh. though i felt it was a, a quite a different look for well she was Ashley trying to regain tonight. power yeah you know she was trying to i think blackmail conrad but then mm. that got just thrown back in her face mm. right of like no I, you're as much in trouble as i am mm. so um but in terms of that, I, 
I was the only pet peeve I have of tonight's episode. I was really disappointed with the conversation between Conrad and Jack at the hospital because it was. It felt like it was going to be this massive thing of like, you know, secrets going to be revealed, but it was. It wasn't even a tit for tat. It wasn't. There was no. I don't know. The subtext wasn't that great. You know, like no one really revealed much. No, I actually like that because I think it's going to start with a whisper and go into a dull roar and then boom. You know, it's like we're starting slow and then we're going to get and it's going to just explode. But, but here's the thing. As opposed to it, what else could have happened? But here's Jack the thing. could have uh, called them out right then and there and it would have been this huge moment and then the rest of the season. No, I get that. But, but again, can't it, top I, think, I think it should be should have been. I mean, that was I don't even know if it was subtle. It, it, it'd be like it should have been and, and forgive. This is very cliche, but it'd be like if I was trying to figure out um, if I knew something about you that you did last night I'd be like, so did you have a good night? Mm-hmm. Roxy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that yeah. that's what it kind of should have been, but it wasn't. It was just very much like, thanks for paying for the... Well, so you didn't need a big explosion. You just needed it to be a I just I just needed them clever. to try to figure each other out of what the other one knows about the other thing that they may or may not know. Well, I don't think either one gives the other that much credit. So, you know, we see Conrad immediately writes it off saying, the boy doesn't know a thing. So obviously he doesn't think Jack's too smart. But I think that's the whole twist is Jack right. is going to get exactly. a lot smarter now. We're going to see a different Jack. And I think that was the beginnings of it tonight. I think he's going to, we're going to finally see Jack. <laughs> I have some news and gossip about that. Yeah, I think okay. he, yeah, yeah that's what I think it was the coming. start of it. I think, you know, we're going to see Jack on his own kind so, of revenge so part. In, d- d- do you think Jack played a good game in your, your mind, Catherine? I think, yeah, I think he was kind of getting Grayson involved and looking like that he's kind of, you know, doesn't know too much. And, you know, I think he, yeah, I think he's starting to make his plan. That's what I thought tonight. Okay. I think he's starting to formulate his plan. I think the fact is, you know, now since Amanda's deaf, fake Amanda, but I think he's, and he's starting to realise people are lying around him. He's starting to realise who can he trust. I think we're going to be starting to see the the start of a very different Jack now, which well, is good because I think we needed it. He's always been a bit of a... <laughs> well, let, let, let's cut to then. Uh, yeah. uh, so Emily walks in and, you know, the computer's there and, and he sort of knows the, tr- the, the truth, quote unquote. How, you know, obviously a very loaded question, but how do you think it has affected Jack in terms of his relationship with Emily? The real Emily or Emily, Emily? I'm just going to call her Emily. Emily. (laughs) Otherwise, just don't even go there. You're opening up a can of worms that I'm not just Emily. It surprises me that it still has not even occurred to him that I guess he just it's not within his brain to think that perhaps they have switched identities. I guess that's just not there, there. But he's obviously starting to put the pieces together that they've had a long relationship. And basically, yeah, that they were both lying to him. He just hasn't figured out yet to what degree he's been lied to. Obviously not this particular storyline, but that kind of thing happens all of the time in life. It's happened to People me. People swap? If you, no, no. This, I'm saying not <laughs> swap this identities. particular storyline. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is all the time there will be something that's right under my nose, mm. and until I am freaking hit over the head with it, and then I'm like, wow, how did I not see that? Until that moment, so, sometimes you just don't see things that are so insane that you're like wow that couldn't possibly true be true unless somebody tells you so i get why jack hasn't put the pieces together yet i mean whose mind jumps to huh maybe there's a case of swapped identity you know you're not thinking that off the bat but at the same time but he has felt this connection to emily it's funny that he has right there's been always this kind of connection and i think and I'm, i'm wondering why he's not maybe he will not starting to think why have i always felt so close to her i mean you know well, okay, that, that's based on emotion, yeah. but yeah. I think I think as a smart person, you kind of go, okay, I need to know how much Emily knew. Mm. So, Emily, how much did you know? Feelings aside, because obviously he's mad at her that she didn't tell him the truth, but yeah. now you should want to know the truth, right? You, you, have, you have an inkling of it through a paper, through a computer and all this. Now, now figure it out. Emily's right there. Ask her some basic questions. And you know what? Maybe get some help. I don't know. But right. But his... his it, it, it's just, it, it's just not. It's just like Daniel's going into the solo. Well, not necessarily because obviously he did ask Victoria for help. Yeah. But I think I think in this weird game, to a degree, you need alliances. And by going solo, it's not going to work out. I have two things. The first is a comment, and the second is a question. The first thing is, I I'm absolutely sure that's why they killed Amanda off of the show because we started to really like 
her and Jack together mm. because he was really liking her. But we didn't want to like that because Jack and Emily are supposed to be together and he didn't think it was her. So there was no other way that they could have resolved this other than killing her without crushing Jack. And of course he's eventually going to find out if it's going to be the season. I don't think so. But my bigger question to you guys is, and I was thinking about this throughout the entire episode, and I, really I don't know the answer. What's more important in a relationship? your emotions or your characteristics. So what matters more? How you feel or who you are? As in the way that Emily feels and the way that Amanda feel, are those bigger deals and should um, take priority over the fact that they're lying and who they actually are? Well, I think lying was always probably the deal breaker, no matter what your feelings are, don't you think? So you think <laughs> who you are in reality is more important than how you feel? Are you talking about the fact that like Amanda, because they were stressing tonight that Amanda really loved him, is that what you're saying? And right, you know, can you really, I mean, Emily's sitting there sticking up for Amanda saying, listen, she loved you, she always loved you, she was your wife, there's so many things to prove that. Okay, and I'm, those I'm gonna, emotions I'm, are real, but I'm gonna that's refine, not who she was. I'm gonna refine your question. Do you think, by realizing the truth, uh, he still loves a Amanda? Right, does it discredit? I think it would. I, th I mean, that's that's what the episode showed tonight. Yeah, I think it would, because it's like, who did you love? Who was the real person? So you start making those... I think once you start going down that track, it's not like, oh, but she really loved me, even though she was I mean, lying it, to me. <laughs> in the case of the show, it's yeah. it's it's only going to get worse, because yeah. he's going to he's gonna find out all these things. And, and his the kernel of his emotion was based on the fact that she was Amanda. Right. As soon yeah. as that truth comes out, holy effing I mother of... I know. Exactly. You watch your mouth still. I said effing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Here, here's what I think is so incredibly difficult about this. When you have an issue with somebody, the way that it gets resolved typically is you sit down and you talk it out. If you have questions, you ask them, and you need those words to come out of that person's mouth so that you can move on. When you have a problem with somebody who's dead, you don't get that closure. So the issue here is, once he learns who Amanda was, or even now that he knew, knows that Amanda and Emily knew each other, the only person that can really help him right now in his mind is dead. So it's like he probably feels all this frustration towards her, and how do you feel such emotion towards a dead person? It's gotta be really difficult. So I think he's torn up inside right now, and it's only gonna get worse when he finds out Amanda, well, that's why, Emily, Emily, Amanda. Well, that's why, you know, that scene that with Emily and Nolan, Emily said, I've always wanted to tell him the truth. And Nolan, sa Nolan said to Emily, no, you can't take Amanda away from him. Again. Yet, again. Like, right. As in, yeah. you just can't do that. That's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. And that's the biggest problem here is, you know, all he wants to do probably is sit down and talk to his wife and be like, what's up? <laughs> what's, up? what's up? Yo, what's up? To put it simply, no. But he wants to talk down and sit with his wife and say, how did you know Emily? Why did you guys do this? Tell me more about the revenge on Conrad. What happened with your father? There's all these questions that are unanswered that he probably thinks are going to remain unanswered for the rest of his life, you know? Fortunately, we know somebody's alive that can answer those questions. Okay, so, so question in terms of this. In Jack's role, is he going to... Is he going to propel the plan that that Amanda would have, or or he thinks he would? Well, I mean, I don't know how this is going to go, but I mean, I sort of feel like at some point Jack and Emily might start aligning because then they're kind of after the same thing, right? Revenge. They're both on a, a revenge path. A, 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 but who is Jack's revenge against? Well, he's the Graysons. <laughs> the, Graysons. Now, the Graysons, which is also Emily's. I mean. It's for different and, reasons. But, but that's what's tough is because, yeah. again, that, that assumes that he he will resolve his emotion and, and align with Amanda, his his wife. But what if he's questioning his wife? That You know, are, he's not fully committed to that path. Jack, Emily, and Nolan, they'll be the big three. Yeah. Where's Aiden? Um, oh, guys. Remember, she's still sleeping with Aiden. Okay, can <laughs> I get your guys' opinion? I'm sure you've talked about it before, but I, I need to know. Do we love Aiden? I like and, Aiden. Uh, I like Aiden. You do? You, I like him a lot. And this whole, the problem with this show for me in terms of relationships is they keep putting the people that I want to be together, Jack and Emily, in relationships that I like. It's like when Jack was with Amanda, I liked that. And, and Emily's with Aiden, I like that. But I know they're supposed to end up together, so stop pairing them with other people 
couples that they like. Well, we can't have them coming back. Yeah, but you have to have them yeah, with other people. But have them with other people that I don't like. <laughs> So then I'm not heartbroken when they leave them to be together. Well, they'll probably kill Aiden off, and then, you know, that'll be... No, <laughs> and then I'll be in heaven with Amanda. It's perfect. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, let's talk about Charlotte. Um, because she's equally confused mm. in tonight's episode. As confused as us, or as confused as... Well, poor Charlotte. I mean, she yeah, thinks Charlotte. she's lost her <laughs> stepsister. Well, she, she how, think of all the things Charlotte's been through. She yeah. thought she lost her mother. Yeah. Um, now, the one person she was getting close to and, you know, being able to relate to. I mean, yeah, she's got her family, but she doesn't relate to the Conrads. And she yeah. did lose or her father. Grayson's. Yes. Um, so, you know, her and Victoria kind of, how do you guys feel about Victoria kind of stepping in and, and mending that wound? Well, I think part of it was just an instinct of a mother. I mean, as <laughs> much as Victoria has those instincts, but I do think that it was partly that. She's just, just so manipulative. She, I mean, Victoria. Yeah, she's yeah. just so manipulative that even when, like, like you're saying, I try to give her the benefit of the doubt and say that's her with her maternal instincts, but there's always some other motive. I mean, it's never just this is my daughter, so I want to be there for her ever. So it's hard. Well, here's the here's the good news. I think Victoria, there's layers, right? Mm. So there's there's her helping her daughter, but also because it can gain her help. But she's getting that she's gaining whatever advantage she can because she truly loves her children. Yeah. You know, and and then and that's the nugget that obviously uh, Emily and Nolan will be zoning in on because because of that fact. That's why the layers of the show are so amazing because there is that love at the core. So, you know, I'm not saying she's not doing it because she doesn't love her daughter, but I'm not saying that's the only reason she's helping. I just think she saw it as an opportunity to get Charlotte back in her circle, don't you? I think yeah. for whatever motive, I don't know at this point, but I think mostly it was an opportunity to move in and get her back in her circle. That's what I saw it as. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Totally, totally kind of random question and, and, you know, skipping ahead, but it's on my mind, so I want to ask it now before I forget. Uh, obviously, we're kind of zoning in on Charlotte, right? Because she's, you know, we, we tried Daniel. That didn't quite work out. You know, that's kind of Aiden's mission now. Emily's mission is going to be Charlotte. The fact that Victoria... Oh, do you know that? You keep saying that. I know this. Well, it's Who, uh, fairly obvious, yeah. That I don't think so. There's sisters. That scene, well, yeah, no, but, but that's, that scene it doesn't that, matter. Yeah. I think it will matter. It does matter. No, all emotions aside for it Emily now. It does matter. Mm. But I don't think so. Here's here's where I could see a possible uh, conflict because if you, tr I feel like if you truly want to break Victoria, because who, who does Victoria still ultimately love? David Clark. David Clark, yeah. And so, guess I mean, which what? was she put the flower on the grave tonight? Yeah. That was sort of. So I know, think to truly break, <laughs> yeah. to truly break Victoria, you have to go after David Clark, and that's going to be very tough for Emily because. That's the one person she's trying to do this for. But what do you mean, go after David Clark? What more can be done to him? I don't, I don't know what that means. I mean, well, by you saying that, that makes me think something of Charlotte, because Charlotte is the only thing left of David Clark. I mean, that, that, that's true. Um, I don't know. I just, that's in the, in, the, in the theoretical realm. That's all I can offer up. Um, we just have to briefly touch upon this whole key in the sea glass thing. All right, go, yes, go ahead. I mean, I can't wait any longer. So we've got this jar of sea glass that has been given from Amanda. Generation to generation yeah. to generation. And of as course, it be. at just the right moment, he smashes the jar, and there is the key with well, the little many, red ribbon. How many times have we seen that in movies? And you know, just, <laughs> do you need a plot to kind of something? He, to here's, turn here's, up? He, oh, wow, what, wow. I, yeah. what I will say, the the good news about that is, at least it's it's a it's something. It's a memento that means something. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, unlike, there, there's been movies I've seen this, you know, let's say, like, the guy's just kind of, like, just gets frustrated, and all of a sudden he start. you know, if I was in the studio, I'd hit the TV, I'd hit the books, yeah. I'd hit the mics and all that, and then out of that, something would present yeah. itself. Yeah. And then, at least, like, uh, the secret door opens and you can walk through. Yeah, at least, at least this had meaning. It'd be like, uh, you know, if... It, it, right, uh, Emily had the locket tonight, right, and she peeled away the, the photo, and underneath was that. So at least, like, something that's... Mm. Something that 
is symbolic could have something underlying right in the same it. in the same sense at least they thought about it earlier in the season and we've seen the sea glass before it didn't just all of a sudden present itself this episode yeah so th they at least thought about it but why was it there did emily put it there who put the key in the sea glass amanda and amanda yeah. amanda did yeah amanda did it because and she knew that he would here, here's my, here's my frustration is that he was mad at Amanda, yeah. then he does this, and then he's going along with her plan. Again, I don't know quite what Jack is all about. I don't know Jack. Well, anger and revenge go hand in hand, so maybe he just feels like fighting somebody. I feel like revenge, revenge is very tactful. Anger has no strategy. Mm. That was, so I think he's we should write that down them. and like hang it somewhere. You think Damn he's right. reacting with anger at the moment, not I think with so. revenge. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I mean, the oh, guy definitely. can't even well, properly walk. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, that was kind of hilarious, them taking him out of the hospital and setting up the IV in the yeah. room, you know. Yeah, <laughs> they walk out with the IV. He's not uh, ready. I thought the actor <laughs> did an incredible job with that, though, when he heard, when Emily said that Amanda had passed. I thought he had a really nice moment there. Yeah, yeah thought he did really well. Uh, speaking of that, let's, let's get to the eulogy. Uh, you thought. I, I, I thought what I thought. I, here's what I thought. <laughs> Typically that happens. I, I usually think what I think. Well, no. here's, what, here's what I thought. <laughs> I thought that the way things were going, we were not going to see the eulogy. Things would be a lot more uh, distraught than we were. And it was. I was expecting a different emotion, but they really kind of honed in and made us feel sad. And, you know, ultimately it worked. Because so I give him credit. death is a thief. Death is a thief. And Emily was just talking about herself. Yeah, that, that's the <laughs> that part so you guys like the best. It's so yeah. ironic that yeah. she's giving her own eulogy. Basically. I mean, it, like... Uh, well, how, how, who better to write it, really? Because it was about her. And burying somebody next to her father that's, like, supposed to be her spot. It, it's just got to be the weirdest feeling. But I, I even sort of, in a way, how sad that is that Amanda has been buried as a not who she is. Right. Inevitably, I, I presume we we think she has no family, no relatives out there. I mean, obviously we, we'll never know, but it, I think that's kind of sad that she's the ultimate lie that she hasn't even been buried Absolutely. as the real person that but she is. But that's how far they took it. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I think it's quite. Sad. Yeah, how, how do you write that wrong eventually? You, can't, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you? all right, let's. Let, no, it's yeah. not. I mean, you could do that, but yeah. but even just even if you take it in the simplest form of changing that name plaque. Mm. You know, because then, okay, you're going to put this random person next to David Clark. Yeah. You know, who David and, Clark didn't know, but, okay, the daughter did, but. And I just also want to mention, I've always was never sure about Emily and Amanda's real relationship, because I always felt like Emily was using Amanda. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, you know, with her death, and then there was a scene also tonight where she said she was one of the few people I loved. I found that almost a revelation in a way, because I was never really sure that Emily I, I would agree with you. Yeah, I never was really sure because I felt like she f saw her as part of her, and she was annoying in, in many ways because when she turned up and, you know, she had to keep sort of getting her back and she had to keep sort of, you know, fixing up everything she did, um, I wasn't sure that she had any real emotion towards her. So I, was, I thought it was very interesting tonight that she said, you know, I've lost one of the people I... I a few people I loved. Yeah, I mean, it's... I think she's realizing that, uh, you know, I mean, she, I, I would say she loves Nolan. She loves Aiden, obviously, in a different way. Uh, she loves Jack in a different way. And she loves David. And she loves David, mm -hmm. her father. Yeah. And, you know, by, by going this route, the people that she loves, she is going to ultimately hurt. Yeah. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean death, but she is going to hurt a lot of people along the way. Mm. I, I, is it love or is there a lot of guilt, too? Because yeah. maybe that's what's wrapped up in this as well. I mean, there's a lot of guilt that she's created this for her. She caused her death, let's face it, really. Yeah. But I, I had a similar issue that you had, mm -hmm. and I couldn't tell whether she was just another person helping her get what she needed mm -hmm. or whether there really was love there. And I think she, from the bottom of her heart, realized without Amanda, there could have been no Emily, yeah. you know, and it never could have moved forward. And so I think... As much as Emily is capable of loving, she loved her. But I think that there's this darkness in her that makes it so that she can't fully love somebody regardless of who it is. Yeah. I, I mean, at least nobody um, 
in her ever future. Let anyone that right. close. Maybe people from her past, such as Jack or her father, but anybody else she meets along the line since she's been so badly wronged, I don't think she can really love in the way that she was capable as a little girl. Well, let's talk about the the brother. <laughs> <laughs> our, uh, you guys, I'm going to hate, hate mail for this, but our black brother. Okay, <laughs> this was an episode of One Tree Hill when Peyton's black brother walks in and everybody starts, like, Facebooking, oh, my God, Peyton's brother's black. Revenge just did the same thing. Um, same thing with 90210. I'm loving that all these shows are doing this. Uh, just to put, like, a bigger twist in the plot. So he was cute, though. He's very cute. <laughs> I will so I not it. agree or disagree. <laughs> He's looking even cuter in the next episode. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you had pointed this out, yeah. Catherine, and so where do you think it's going? And why? Why? The, f the, f the brother. The, the brother coming in? Well, it's going to shake Emily up, obviously. Someone from her past, and it looks like, I mean, we're getting into predictions here, but it certainly looks like from the indications that he's going to figure out pretty quickly who she is. Yeah. I feel like, duh, <laughs> you know, just to put it bluntly. I mean, like yeah. you were saying, if you knew me 14 years ago, mm. you'd probably be able to recognize me or at least recognize who I wasn't. Yeah. You know? That's true. I think it's just another thing to interrupt the plan, to sort of throw her off, to have another thing to deal with. We don't know how much this story is going to develop. Is he, what is his intentions? I mean, who knows? We'll of course they have to do yeah. that, though, because, we, I mean, otherwise there would have been one season. Oh, go ahead. Am I no, here? I was going to say that, you know, I, I don't even know where we're going for the finale. I mean, uh, to me, it's got to be a, the carry-on disaster, but, you know, whether or not it goes through, I have no idea. Another death, you know, maybe. I'm excited for this news because I don't know this news, Catherine. and apparently you're telling me spoilers, so let's get into news and gossip because I want some <laughs> clarity, as The Bachelor would say. TV news. Martin, I need some clarity! <laughs> don't we all? Go ahead, Catherine. Uh, okay, me. <laughs> okay, well, we were talking about... Uh, okay. Something. We were talking about something. Uh, Josh Bowman was talking to... Doing an interview, and he, he actually is saying that the initiative story will be wrapping up. And uh, so... I don't know what that means. That means the initiative is going to be gone, I guess. We're getting yeah. back to the roots of each of the characters and why they're there, why Emily is here, more importantly, and Daniel gets involved. Uh, they said the, the initiative will probably continue to delve into Helen Crowley's death, but seeing this as part of the plot resolve will most likely be a relief to lots of fans who felt the storyline was confusing and bogged down the overall objective. And there's also, uh, they're also saying that I think uh, that Daniel is going to be renewing a romance and it could be Ashley or Emily. So that's the other thing they're indicating that it's going to go down that way. And uh, Amanda's foster brother, uh, it says, reaches out to Victoria. So what does that mean? No, He's no. going to start aligning with Victoria. It, with I Victorian, mean, if he knows the truth. Yeah. With the Victoria enlisting the help of Amanda's foster brother in her charitable foundation, so we haven't seen that yet, Emily sees as an opportunity to regain some of her missing past while settling the score with someone who had a hand in setting her own her on this path in the first place. Settling a score. So we don't know what the history is with the brother yet. Interesting. Do we? How many episodes do we have left? Uh, uh, I think 22 total. So okay. seven more? Yeah. And also, Mason Treadwell's coming back. I think, uh, Roger, they've been tweeting out, like, Gabriel Mann and that this week, that he's back on set, Roger Bart. So Mason I love Treadwell. That. Mason Treadwell will be back. Lo love that. <laughs> Are we all good with that? I think yeah. so. OK, so Nick, who plays Jack, was telling OK that he would like to see himself be hurt and angry and violent. OK. <laughs> because he doesn't mean, like, beating people up, although he wouldn't mind if that happened also. He just thinks that it wouldn't be detrimental to the show if his character was more angry, but they seem to want to make him more innocent, which he understands because of the fans, but he wishes that he could have some sort of explosion at some point. So that makes me think that we're not heading in that direction and that he keeps his cool. Huh. Um, furthermore, we had Emily Van Camp on Ellen DeGeneres this week, and apparently she is a little scaredy cat, which you wouldn't know from the show. Uh, I could probably tell that but she about was, her personality. She was talking about her fear of zombies, and Ellen being the jokester <gasps> she is. isn't scared of zombies? <laughs> Ellen being the jokester she is had a zombie sneak up on Emily <laughs> and, like, scared the piss out of her on the show. And uh -huh. she said, um, Emily said, everyone knows 
It is so easy to scare me. Put a little spider in my dressing room and I will freak out. That was a good one. I'm surprised she does all the things, I mean, that, that Emily actually does. You know, like being on boats and right, things spooky. like that. Right, spooky. Yeah. All right, go figure. Is that it? That's what we got. That's what, what we, we got, got for March 10th, 2013. With that, let's move into predictions. Okay. And now, you're after Buzz TV. Uh, I can never really predict anything. They just, <laughs> we just had a few spoilers, I guess. I think the big brother, uh, or the, the brother, brother is obviously... Is obviously yeah. Big brother. All they showed us was about the brother. We didn't see anything else. On um, the one line that I wrote down was, he said, looking pretty good for a dead girl. <laughs> wah, wah. I mean, funny. So That's a great pickup line. <laughs> yeah, you should try to for, for a zombie. For a zombie, if you're yeah. dating a zombie. <laughs> and then throw a wink in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> other than that, I mean, I, I'm excited. I, I wish, I want to see the devel development of the Ashley storyline. I want to know what the hell Padma's doing. Um, I'm curious because of the news and gossip you gave. It seems like they're it said talking about going back to the original characters and the original plot lines. Are we going to see people that have come on in this season die off and disappear? But also they're saying the initiative is going to be resolved. How? Right. That's. I mean, yeah. I can understand them maybe fading away more, but to I mean, wrapping I mean, up to resolve it. How would you? I don't resolve think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be a full resolve. Yeah, I can't see that either. Um, yeah, I, we might see the mother again. I, I I like that little thing about you know I can't even. No, yeah. I don't know where her mother is and all that. So, I honestly don't know where we're going. I really don't. But That's... we will get revenge. <laughs> we will get our revenge under on. Uh, with yes. that, that concludes tonight's revenge. I can't even say the word. <laughs> revenge. 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 Uh, uh, thank you so much for listening. Once again, go to iTunes, rate and comment, and also out in theaters as we speak. Adventures of Serial Buddies. Start. I saw it last night. It was so good. <laughs> and Catherine Tulich saw most of it. I saw most, and I reviewed it. Come on. There you my go. Man's stunt. Have you got my review there? You can read it. I out. don't have. <laughs> uh, it's something about Aussies and going on a road trip. Yeah, I said it reminded me of movies like Muriel's Wedding and Priscilla Queen of the Desert on a road trip with uh, people that. Ah, that, that, that go into your that, heart. That, right. that, that that drive it right into your heart. It has. Like that. There we go. It was beautiful, own, wasn't it? Maria Menounos <laughs> and Beth Christopher Bears. Lloyd. Beth Bears from Two Broke Girls. Uh, um, Artie Lang. Uh, John Comerford, who's also a host here, and he was incredible, and it was really funny. That's right. Mm. So go see it out in theaters uh, in Boston, New York, Kathy Chicago. Kathy Gifford. Kathy Lee Gifford, San Francisco, <laughs> and of course, Los Angeles. With that, we conclude tonight's from Agenda. Give me some Twitters. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. At Roxy Stryer. At, at Catherine Toolich, T U L I C H. <laughs> and at AfterBuzz TV. Thank you. From Bing.com, <laughs> executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.